How do you envision the future of women in US politics? What role will they play in legislative process in five years? Oh gosh, okay, so yes, ah, oh, mm. uh, this is a concern and the political landscape becomes one-sided. Um, we've got a, a lot to be very concerned about. We recently experienced this in, here in the United States. It's um, more of one party than uh, a shared views. And I think that while there's a lot of hurrah on, on the side of those um, with a political view that are now um, the majority, it's there is some downsides to that too, because again, that mind think can be disruptive um, and not achieve um, ends. So I think that the future of women in U.S. politics, especially offers a truly meaningful agenda, and I think we need to stay the course on that to find a balance between all sides of the divides, and there are very clear divides that we can identify. Uh, but to be careful about terminology within those divides, terms like whiteism or um, elitism or privilege or um, the has and the have nots, capitalism, um, uh, socialism, these terms have, have gotten bad connotations because largely of a group think, a majority think, uh, with the two thumbs up or the, the likes in social media, but we're not having a discussion about what this really means and what we can learn from these, these particular topics, which I think is missing. So I think there's a great opportunity to, um, for women to apply an innate skill of our um, nurturing to this, um, rather than putting a Band-Aid on the elephant in the room, we need to strip the Band-Aid off and take a look at the sore and um, heal. And I think that women have, again, that natural tendency to nurture. I think that rather than trying to be like men, we need to be like women and to be the, the, the warriors and the goddesses and the transhumanists and, and the purveyors of wisdom that we can be. And wow, what a great time to be able to do that. So um, I think in the next five years, I hope, I don't know if it's possible, but I hope that that's the direction we take rather than trying to get media attention like we see going on um, with the uh, some a few of, of, of the women in politics, which they call the, I can't remember what the term is, the, the team, I think there's four women um, who have bandied together and on one party that like to be known as, I think you probably know the term where I'm missing it, because um, I, I don't want to focus on it. But if you have that type of mind thing that are pushing for something forward, that are each parroting each other, then they lose their individual um, um, passion. Um, now, one could say, well, that's a good thing. Let them uh, put all their tools together and fight forward in the, in, the, in the front. But being in the front and getting a lot of media attention is not what we want. It's, that's where politics has gone down a really uh, slippery slope and into a rabbit hole. We need to consider again, as you said, and, and very um, straightforward and smartly so, education. Being education and nurturers is, is what we need to help solve the problem. I hope that the next five years uh, will enlighten us to this sensibility. That would be great. Ladies, I think you're very excited about our future now. I am very excited for sure. You are a prominent figure in the transhumanist movement. Now, is the US Transhumanist Party really supporting the idea of the first female president? Yeah, I, I, I think that um, we need a, a, a female president, but no, I do not see the USTP as, as being the platform for which the first female president will come about. I think that is um, a, a long shot, it's possible, but I, I don't see that as being um, logical. I think better, um, more logical is to see, uh, um, since the Democrat party is, is currently um, the majority, I think that it'd be more um, sensible that um, a Democrat female will become the first president. Uh, but if we want a, um, a transhumanist 
to be president, we need to be careful about the terminology because there is no transhumanist party on the, uh, in, in, in the political foray uh, legally. And as a, a social understanding we have in the United States, the Democrat party, the Republican party, uh, the Green Party, the Libertarian Party, and then independence. Um, can the can a transhumanist party get there? I don't know. It's possible because there's more horses in transhumanism in academics, which you know, academics you start out with getting students getting degrees in fields that relate to transhumanism. But I think as you know, you're considering all the people in the country and and that we're pretty much a two party country. I think it it makes more sense for a woman with the, the current parties. Um, but I, I don't wanna second guess this. I would uh, love to see a very intelligent, capable, visionary futurist who's a woman who also is a transhumanist become president. Um, but, but perhaps that's not as important as having the uh, the policies, legislations, the laws that support a transhumanist agenda. And getting that legislation across doesn't necessarily come from a president. It, be, it comes from policy making and social um, understanding where people want it. The grassroots system works really well. When people stand up and rise for a cause, it's usually seen. We see that with Black Lives Matter. And finally, thank goodness, the, the world is alerted to this inequity um, in, in race. But it didn't start in the United States. If you take a look at the history of the discrimination against Africans, it stems back um, far before even America was founded, far before uh, Europe started doing trade. It started in even in Africa. And slavery was not just black slaves, women were slaves as well. And since this discussion is about women in politics, we have to look at how women have been slaves, um, enslaved in different countries throughout the world. And not slaves, I don't wanna lessen the meaning of slavery because it is a horrific, horrific thing. And um, we have to change that to a discussion on rights and women were not given rights. Again, going back to our earlier discussion, women didn't have the right to vote in the United States till over 100, say 44 years ago. And looking in certain countries in the world today, women are discarded or walk behind the men. And even in, in certain religions, um, women you know, are secondary um, to men. So there's a whole area here. I don't think that the USTP, as much as I value it and respect it, will actually have um, be on the ballot for a woman president. I think that what we might do, the USTP and Humanity Plus and the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technology, Foresight Institute, Future of Humanity Institute at, at Oxford, uh, the different groups that think about the future and contemplate scenarios and problem solving for the future, I think it might be um, better to create a political action committee with uh, objectives and goals to um, set out to reach and then introduce those into society, into the mainstream and get our politicians to pay attention. Well, let's hope that the situation will improve and the U.S. Transhumanist Party will support the idea of the first female president more actively in the future. As for the female presidency, do you support the idea of the first female pope? Do you think women can actually change Vatican history and ascend the throne? Uh, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, frankly, I don't know why the pope is always male, other than the Catholic Church is male dominated. So it, it makes sense. There's a reason to that. I'm not sure if God prefers men to women. And I, I think that's, I, I'm not sure who made that decision, uh, but certainly, the religious narrative um, claims that women came from the, the, the rib of, of man and whether one takes that seriously or as, as lore is their own um, you know, determination and, and not my position to judge or, or to interfere with that belief system. But um, I think there are many complexities and it becomes a little bit difficult to parse out uh, 
and find a thread of logic without leading down that rabbit hole that we don't want to go through. But if a woman were to be Pope, and I think that's plausible, um, um, I think that change would probably come about. And I would hope that that change not be politicized. I would hope that that change be about um, that nurturing, that, that skill, that talent that women have innately and to let that blossom and flourish. Um, I'm not sure, frankly, if women are better than men, uh, more intelligent or wiser than men, because intelligence is largely based on our genetic makeup or you know, <laughs> genetic lottery um, or genetic um, legacy rather than uh, genetic liberty, which, which I advocate for. And wisdom certainly comes from life experience. So I think that whether it's male or female as Pope, that we'd want someone who has wisdom and intelligence and can apply it aptly to that role, which is a leading role in the world. Certainly the Pope is, is one of the, the, the key um, authority figures in the world. Right, after all, God may be a woman, so ladies remember, the throne is yet to be captured. Tasha, this was more than an interview. You have described an exciting future of women in US politics. Thank you so much. You are watching Women Futures. Click the like button if you enjoyed the episode and subscribe to the Futurist blog. Stay tuned, girls. We make the future.